In this last lesson for trigonometric functions grade 11, we are going to have a look at interpreting the graphs. When interpreting graphs, it is important to realize that the knowledge you gained in other chapters will now be put to use. Let's have a look at the example. The sketch shows the graphs of f and g for the interval minus 180 to 180 degrees. Before you start with the questions, you identify all the information that was given. Here, two graphs with their complete equations were given, and the first one is graph F. From the equation of F given, it is clear that only one transformation has been applied to the original cos graph, and that is a shift in the positive direction with 45 degrees. Then, a second function, G, is also given. To form G, one transformation was applied to the original sin graph, and that was compressing it horizontally, which also influences the period of the graph. Question 1. Give the coordinates of point A. If we go and have a look at point A, you will see that it is the maximum turning point for both these graphs. That means we can focus on either of the two graphs to determine this turning point. Graph F has moved 45 degrees to the right. For the basic cos graph, the maximum turning point is on the y-axis at 0 degrees, and that has now moved 45 degrees to the right, and therefore the x-coordinate of point A is 45 degrees. To determine the y-value, we need to realize that both these graphs have a constant in front of 1, which means the amplitude of these graphs is 1, and therefore the maximum value and the y value here is 1. Question 2. Determine the length of OD in third form. OD is a vertical length, so to determine the length we need the y values of O as well as D. At O the y value is 0, Therefore, if we can determine the y value at d, we will also know the length of OD. d is the y intercept of graph f, and to determine a y intercept, we simply take the equation and substitute x with 0, and this we can then determine on our calculators and we'll get square root 2 over 2. That is then the y value of coordinate d which means that OD will also be square root 2 over 2. Question 3. Give the domain of G. For the domain, we read from bottom to top to decide which Y values graph G consists of. Graph G has a minimum value of minus 1, and we know this because we've already mentioned that the amplitude of the graph is 1. From minus 1, as we move upwards, the graph consists of all the y values up to its maximum, which is at 1. Therefore, the domain of graph G will be all the y values in between minus 1 and 1. Question 4. Calculate the coordinates of B and C. If you go and have a look at the sketch, you will see that point B and C together with point A, are the intercepts of the two graphs. To determine this point of intersection of two graphs, we are going to equate the two equations of the graphs, and then solve x and afterwards y. For this, you then need your knowledge that you gained with trig equations. First step will be to change sin so that it also becomes cos using co-functions, and then that angle will form my reference angle. Then I break up into the quadrants where cos is positive, add my reduction formulas, and simplify. If I then focus on my first general solution and take 45 degrees and add 1 times 120 degrees, I will get a value of 165 degrees, which will be the x value of point B. Similarly, if I take the 45 degrees and subtract 120 degrees, I will get an x value of minus 75 degrees, which will be the x value for C. One by one, I can now substitute these two x values back into either of the two equations 
to determine the corresponding y values. And for both of them, that will work out to be minus a half. So b will be the coordinate 165 and minus a half, and c will be the coordinate minus 75 and minus a half. Question 5. Give the equation of the new function that will form when the graph of f is shifted 60 degrees to the left. When a graph shifts to the left, it shifts in the negative direction. But we've seen that for horizontal shifts, the sign of the shift is the opposite of the direction it moves in. This means to move in the negative direction, we are going to add 60 degrees. So if we want to determine the equation of the new function that forms, we need to take the original function of cos of x minus 45 and add 60 degrees to that. Therefore, the equation of the new function will be cos of x plus 15 degrees. Question 6. For which values of x is gx bigger than 0? For this question, we only focus on gx, which is the blue graph, and the question is where will this graph have y values that are bigger than 0, and all the y values bigger than 0 are above the x-axis. So if we identify the parts of the blue graph that are above the x-axis, you will find two parts. The first part can be described as all the x values between minus 180 and minus 90 degrees, with minus 180 and minus 90 not included, because gx cannot be equal to 0. The second part is the interval for all x's between 0 and 90 degrees, and once again, 0 and 90 degrees are excluded. Question 7. For which values of x is gx smaller than fx? Here, we are now comparing the two graphs g and f. That means we will be focusing on their points of intersection. The points of intersection for these two graphs will be at c and at b, and then point A is a touching point, so that's also an important point to keep in mind. These two coordinates, C and B, now divide our sketch into three intervals or three parts. And we are going to have a look at each part separately. The question is, where is GX smaller than FX? And here, that smaller than implies below so the question is, where is the blue graph below the green graph? If we go and have a look at our first interval, and that is all the values to the left of point C, you will see that the blue graph is above the green graph, and that means this is not part of our answer. The second interval will be all the values in between point C and point B, and here, the blue graph is below the green graph, and that means it will form part of our answer. For the last interval, all the values to the right of point B, the blue graph is again above the green graph, and then not part of our answer. Our final answer then only consists of the middle interval, and that will be all the x values in between point C and B, with C and B excluded because the two graphs cannot be equal to each other. Then we also need to focus on point A. Point A is part of the interval that we've just written down, but at point A these two graphs are equal to each other. The question is where is G smaller than F and not equal to as well? Therefore we need to exclude the value 45 from our answer. To answer interpretation questions takes practice. You've already built up all the knowledge you need to answer these questions. You just need to now apply that to a specific graph.